Welcome to the Grand Jour. Now this is basically a full-blown emotiva just porn show. Should I say porn? Is that going to get me demonetized? I don't know. Download the Anri wallpaper. Um, we have two of the Emotiva PA1 monoblocks, one Emotiva SP1 basically phono and switcher, and I'm running all this off the Aeris R2R deck and the U-turn orbit turntable, which that has to move off of. And we're going to play with all this stuff right now. Oh, Yamo C103s. I'll link to those on Amazon in that finish. Um, in, in that finish. And I only took them down because I haven't used them in a long time. Um, but they also help prove a point. But first, before we do any of that, we're going to listen for a second because you need to hear something. I gotta breathe. You hear that ticking? Like a bomb? Yeah, that's apparently normal. When I got these from Emotiva, because Emotiva contacted me and was like, hey, you've done a lot of reviews of even our stuff, like the loudspeakers. I will eventually get to this MC700 surround sound processor, which was designed for the sim racing rig, which is gonna power those, or at least feed signal to those. I love Emotiva stuff. So I was itching to get a hold of these. And these are basically Class D monoblocks. That's all they are. The back is, which you're gonna have to excuse the uh, massive cable. If you wanna laugh, click the link to these cables on the Amazon, in the Amazon description. Because I could tell you this much, I'm going to Rocky Mountain, I'll probably bring these, and you're all gonna laugh. Uh, speaker out, it has an XLR input, or in this case I have quarter inch adapter, on a set of, actually those these are the 175 hour burn-in RCAs, still don't think I have 175 hours, and then a power plug and a switch, the end. Oh, there's a switch back here that says auto and on. When you let the units auto sleep, they shut off, the, the power indicators in front shut off, and you're left with that ticking. And they tick out of time, and they all tick, and they tick, tick, tick. And when I asked Emotiva about this, they're like, well, apparently the way that's designed with the ice circuitry and everything, that's it searching for signal, because they're set to auto. Now I've used a lot of amps and speakers and things that go to sleep, and never once has it ticked. And I didn't know about this. I had them up here powering the Micah RB42s for a while. And I'm just sitting here and I was doing, I don't remember which review it is, but if you go to my previous couple months, something released around April, May, you're going to watch me in the review literally stop and go, because I heard the ticking for the first time during a review recording. And apparently that's just normal for the unit. Now, if you put this in a normal room or on a desk and it's not dead quiet, you're not going to notice it. But I noticed it and therefore I have to tell you about it. Uh, I also pulled the top off to show you the inside and show you exactly how small this is. Let me read you some power specs on these amps before we move on. So the PA1, uh, output power uh, 8 ohms, RMS 140 watts, or if you want lower total harm we got to talk about some things, some issues with the amps besides the clicking. Total harmonic distortion can be a tenth of a percent or one percent. And one percent is a lot. And these are $300 a piece amps. So these are not cheap. So you're looking at 140 watts. And if you use five watts less, it's a tenth of a watt. So there is that class D line. I always talk about it where you go past a certain amount of power and the total amount of distortion goes up 10 times. Now, on cheaper class D amps, SMSL stuff, cheaper topping stuff, I forget what the other brands are, they usually will write the spec of like 50 watts, and if you go past 35, you get 10% more, which is not 1%, it's 10% distortion. So at least Emotiva has been kind enough to just give us 1%. But the maximum, are you ready for this? These will push a 2.7 ohm load, which um, I'm, I can't think of any two ohm speakers. I'm sure someone in the comments is gonna be like, oh, well, Zeos, the Paradigm uh, 48392 from 1983 was a 2.7 ohm loaded speaker. Well, if you had one of those, this little box 
with this little circuit, smaller than my hand, will push 450 watts. That's significant. And it ramps up, like four ohm speakers are 300 watts at, when you're pushing it, 270 normal. Uh, basically, plenty of power for most applications. These are designed for either a little desk setup like this, or in a room if you just want some extra power, or if you're crazy, you're doing a surround sound, you get one of their bigger uh, mono blocks or stereo amps for the front channels, and then you want to do a center channel and a rear, and then another rear, you just have to keep lining up $300 amplifiers. Fine. But the total harmonic distortion of 1% is a little bit sketch. I yell at Sony receivers because Sony receivers claim 1% total harmonic distortion as like a bullet point for awesomeness. And it's like, no, uh, total harmonic distortion should definitely be a half a percent or under all the time. My crowns, I looked it up, my crown 2502, the 1500 watts in there, claim to net, they always have less than half a percent which is still not great, but less than half a percent is better than one. So moving away from the THD, let's talk about the actual amp itself. It's the simplest unit on earth. You turn it on, either you set it to auto or not auto, they barely get hot. There isn't even a heat sink except for that one there to actually generate heat. There's one capacitor of 400 volts, 470 microfarads. The end. And I'm using this massive power cable from Amazon as basically a meme. Because, have you looked at the price yet? I really want, look at the price. You're gonna buy one if they stay in stock. There's probably eight of them on Amazon total. And I own two. Use it to plug in your computer at a LAN, like I did, and just look about boss for like $26. Um, it's a very simple layout. I'm gonna cover it again so I don't get electrocuted. There's, that's it. We, we are done talking about the actual build. We do have to talk, we'll turn it on and we'll actually have music play. I want to not electrocute myself because this is plugged in and I do not recommend this unless you're going to put like a Lexan top on and be a total boss. There we go. Okay, and I'll screw that in later. Uh, first thing we should do is we should talk about the setup. Let me describe the setup. So, big Yamo C103s. Six inch, definitely don't belong on a desk, running on the uh, Soundrise Pro stands. As you can see, they hold it just fine. These are rated for 40 pound speakers, so. But you ba do. Two of these, you need two unless you're running the world's most badass Bluetooth speaker in mono. This is the SP1, let's look at this for a second. So, I have some reservations for this unit. I understand what it is, and I, I got it without really grasping the concept. I'm like, oh, you're sending me the mono blocks, cool, could you send me something to control them? And they recommend, oh, let's send you the SP1. And if you look, the fascia, well, it's got some fingerprints on it, has four buttons. And literally it did with one, well, it has five buttons. One, two, three, phono, and standby. Standby turns the unit off. The back of this, can I swing this? Oh my God. Zeos, you're not thinking this straight through. Very small power button here. Now you don't have to shut off the main power. You can stand by at the front. These are your outputs. You just have no, I'm sorry, these are your inputs. Input one, input two, input three. Three lights in the front, three inputs. This is your phono input. I have that turntable hooked up to this. No need for a ground. And then you have two switches to choose between um, moving coil or moving magnet. And that's a moving magnet turntable, so that's plugged in. And then here are your outputs. And these RCA outputs are going into the Emotiva Control Freak, which you cannot buy. And I would like everyone to petition Emotiva to get off their ass and build these again because they could charge anything they want because this doesn't exist in such a beautiful form. Because uh, here's the problem with this setup. Computer to Aorist R2R DAC via optical. Uh, it outputs RCA into this unit. I turn this unit on. I tell it I want number one. If I play music, and I turn it up. Wait for the clicks. Come on. There's no volume control in this setup without that. These are straight power amps. They get signal 
and they make go. The end. There's no volume, there's no taper, there's no trim, there's no nothing. So you have to control these. Now when I got this from Emotiva, I looked over it real quick. I was like, oh, it's got four inputs and it comes with a remote control. And this indeed does come with a remote control. This is the remote control. The days of Emotiva's amazing aluminum remote controls is long dead. As you can see with, with these, I wish they would offer it as like an extra option. I know a couple of the really fancy amps offer like the aluminum option for $50 more. Audio God does that. But Emotiva has just fallen into the, the plastic, like, at least they're not everybody else's, but I hate, sh even the back of this is not shiny plastic, and the front is. Why would you do that? You know what shiny plastic looks like? This has no fingerprints on it, and this does. So, learn lessons, make everything dull. So I looked at this remote when, I, when they were going to send it to me, and I'm like, oh good, I could choose the inputs. Input 2, input 3, phono, input 1, and there's volume buttons down here. Hey Motiva, volume doesn't work. And he goes, oh, that remote that's labeled SP1? Yeah, the volume doesn't actually, there is no volume control in this. It's just a passive pass-through. That's for other devices. If you wanted to get like one of their DACs, it would work on their DACs. And I'm like, what? So, pay $300 a piece for these. Pay $300 for that. That's $900 total. You have no way to control the volume. So these buttons are useless, and this middle button is useless. But you can stand by the unit, so congratulations. So that meant I had to figure out my own solution, because I was trying to do it in just software. Now, if you as another thing, if you're doing phono, like here's what here's what kills me. If you're doing phono, like this is designed to be a phono preamp, and it is a very good phono preamp. I'm gonna I'm gonna flip this lid up. And I know that is a photo uh, disc, and I know everyone's like, it's going to be noisy, Zios. Zios, do you really want to... I'm going to hold the thing here and let it spin up a little bit. Do you really want to use a photo disc? And I'm like, oh, look, I've played a dozen discs on it. Let me use this for the review because Guardians of the Galaxy is amazing. Do that. Do that. Do this. <laughs> Okay, great. But you still, as the consumer, have to put a volume control between this and these, or you're just going to get the full volume all the time. So it, it's, I feel like they're, they're missing something because the only, I don't even think one of their DACs has an input of analog that could then control volume, which would take away the purpose of this. So I don't understand how you integrate this thing into a setup. Not even of just these, you'd have to use this as a phono pre into a receiver with its own volume control and not this. And if I could extend the wires, you'd see this is a perfect stack. Are you gonna really do that? Oh. All right, I'm turning that down. So other than that clicking, I'm going to murder someone, so I'm shutting that off for a second. I can tell you that the Phono Pre is very good. Now, I've got the Shit Manny and the other Emotiva Phono Pre here. Let me give these a little shout out. I have intentions to do a vinyl video where I just discuss vinyl in general. It, it, it'll probably be a review of these Phono Preamps, but it's honestly going to be a review of the vinyl community, the ideas, the perceptions, and I'm going to have a lot of hate for it. But that's not for today. That's for another day. <sighs> Pasta's going to kill me. And I can tell you it's a very good phono preamp. But again, how are we accessing this? This is basically, I don't think this unit is designed to go in league with these units. There's something missing in the middle. There's This is great. The fact that it's Emotiva is like, wow, you managed to get this whole thing together like that, huh? So, this on its own can be useful, but what you need is you need to be able to buy a phono preamp. Now, those are about $150 each, the Manny and the XPS one. So, you could look to spend that. Now, this is double that cost, but 
you do get a very, very good switch. And by that, I mean, when you go between one, two, and three, it is a, it's routing without any digital interruptions. It's literally just a relay that goes click and it's done and it's clean and you get a remote that does switch. So it doesn't do volume. So that's gonna still be up to you. You could integrate this into a different type of setup way easier than you can with these mono blocks. These mono blocks aren't supposed to go directly to this. Not in my mind. They're supposed to go, there's supposed to be something in the middle. Right now, this is what's in the middle. Right now, th Hold on, Mr. Robot just came on. I love that soundtrack. This is what's in the middle. So I would probably not buy this as like, oh, I spent $900 and I'm ready to go because you have to spend more to control the volume. That said, let's talk about this real quick and get it out of the way. I like it. I think it's a little pricey, but you do get a quality preamp. I think the preamp, and I, I, I could, if I got a splitter, so I don't think you could just run a splitter and then, it's got some dust on it. This has a little more control to it. I don't think the bottom, yeah, there was, actually, no, there they go. There's your uh, settings. You got your, your dip switches there. You got your controls here, on, off, left, right, 47 ohm, 100 ohm, 470 ohm, 1000 all settable at the bottom and then the front it's very plain jane again blue leds but that's emotiva's thing move you over make the clickings go one more listen to vinyl because why the hell not by the way this is a very very special experience because a vinyl Phono mono blocked with these Yamos is just. Let me tell you what it is. Shut that off and lift that up real quick. It's great. That's what it is. It's great. Now, switching back to the Aorist and digital, which I was using to control, but it's very sketchy. In fact, right now, I don't even have the full volume outputting of FUBAR there because this knob, as much as it controls, and I was saying the guy can go loud, I'm 18 decibels down on FUBAR, 18. That means when I go to a loud song, and let's see if I can just click next to a loud song. Oh man, I have such good recording quality. Nothing is loud. That's pretty loud. It's not really. No, that's Gabo. I'm not doing Gabo. Where's a loud song, damn it? This is Book of Mormon, I believe. Great play, by the way. Absolutely deserves all the awards. If I push 18 more decibels of that into the DAC, and the DAC spits it out into this, and then this spits it out into that, this will be such a touchy volume control. Ooh, so you really need a good preamp to do what I'm doing here. So if you need us a switcher with a good phono pre, this is fine. $300 is fine. I'm going to leave it alone. It matches. It's got a remote. You're not going to find much in the way of something like that. So, I mean, if you know of one, tell me about it. I just wish the remote wasn't just... Why are you torturing me with these volume controls? If it had volume controls, if this could actually have a bypass button to just be a switcher and then hit it again, and you could actually use a digital volume control or a stair-step control like their, their old XDA2 DAC, uh, absolutely worth 300 350 all day I could sell them all day all day I could sell them a little bit harder to sell when there's nothing controlling any balance of the inputs and outputs I know that's the point where it doesn't interrupt the signal and it's just basically putting it across but it's spooky this might actually come to Rocky Mountain don't get me wrong it's great at what it does and we're probably gonna have a turntable there whether that's the shit one or if I get another company to throw out Swan I really want one of those Oracle ones like the $2,200 crazy entry-level ones because they look cool and we'd have something there to play vinyl at Rocky Mountain it feels wrong to not and we probably would use this I'd have no issue using this now moving along from this leaving it as is and talking about the PA ones because they're monoblocks. They're tiny monoblocks, and they're basically affordable monoblocks. It's very hard. When I got my Behringer A500s, when I got my Behringer A500s years ago, 
the goal was to get two of them and run them mono. And I did that for the longest time in my living room. I just ran two A500 mono blocks and they claimed 600 watts per channel and it was ooh, and then they overheated with the ohms and they're like, ooh, they didn't like that. So having this cost only a little bit more, actually probably double what those Behringer's cost and still produce a decent amount of power, even though they went 600 watts into eight ohm for the Behringer's. And this is only like 140. To get a mono block at all that that's under $500 and it's a dedicated thing is hard. My only issue with these is there's some speakers that I think these amps, and I'm usually in the class of all amps, as long as they have power, they're fine. I've heard some harshness. My ohms in the other room, I ran my ohms off these and it added a little bit too much to the treble, just like like I could feel that they're not a class AB or they're even my, my ohms are running on giant class D's, giant class D's, the biggest ones Crown makes that you can afford and they're perfect. But I put them on these and they got just as loud because I think they're four ohm, are they four ohm, six ohm? And they drew the power and it was pushing them, but the treble was like, I had to step back. And here on this desk with these Yamos, I'm getting the same effect. I know exactly what these Yamos sound like. I know that they're a giant soft wooden barrel of lovely music. And when I run them through these amplifiers, I get just this hint of sibilance that isn't supposed to be there. Now there's other speakers where it sounds absolutely phenomenal. When I ran the Mic RB42s, which you think that that's, oh Zeus, why are you talking about a $130 pair of speakers and these are a $600 pair of monoblox? Because uh, fuck you, RB42s are the benchmark speaker now. Although I think those Yamo uh, C91 Concert 2s probably beat them in detail, but those are also $400 a pair, so, you know, eat me. I think the little bit of sparkle these add can help some speakers. I think of the draw is, here's the thing about speakers, all right? Let me get real metaphysical with you. Speakers like that have a load giggity and it varies every speaker is different every speaker draws differently in, in a passive sense from the crossover whether it needs more for low for the bass whether the crossover itself is inefficient what the actual because when you run it the actual ohm load changes based on how much power is going into it so they're all snowflakes i'm going to give you the snowflake analogy and i can't tell you without a shadow of a doubt if these amps will be great on your speaker or add a, a, just a taste of like, mm, what is that sharpness? Now, some speakers are dull and they could use a little sharpness. I'm sure, I'm absolutely sure, these amps, these speakers, my living room, perfect. Because I have a giant living room and keeping them soft and warm is fine, but what is you, as you back up feet and feet and feet, all of a sudden that little bit of extra treble in a giant room is absolutely appreciated. The problem is here on a desk, I don't believe that these are the best choice for amps for speakers. I would try something much less uh, cutting edge. I could smell the cutting edge out of these amps. So my advice to you is if you're looking for monoblocks, if you're looking for cheap, solid monoblocks in a room, try these. If you're one of those crazy assholes like I am and you're like, hey, what would be cool is monoblocks on a desk, beware because these might add a little bit too much in the treble you can always fix that with a mini dsp actually a mini dsp would be ideal for these because you'd get a volume control it'd be digital and you wouldn't be able to see it but you'd also get to control any frequency adjustments and then you'd be able to run two subwoofers you could run four of these in a stack and then run you could break the part, the top and bottom of the speakers because they have, ooh. Yeah, these have binding post top and bottom so you could separate the woofer from the tweeter. But then you'd still be running through the crossover inside, so it's a waste of time. But if you ever wanted to build your own loudspeaker, here's a, here's a concept for people who have way too much time and way too much money. You'd buy a stack of these, three on each side, and then you'd get a mini DSP 8X. They make them that have like 10 outputs. And you could just feed individual signals of individual crossovers, individual timings to all of them. 
and then run each one of these individually to any driver in any part of any speaker. And then you can control timing and flux and, and crossover frequencies and you could you could put compression on one driver. This is back to a mini DSP. Every review is gonna always go back to a mini DSP review. Oh, one other thing. This is the plastic covers that came with these amps. Oh, did you see the front? Yeah, that's it. Th that's it. That That's the whole fascia. One little blue dot and Emotiva carved in there, but in black, on black, they didn't actually fill it in. So when it came, it came with, and excuse the, the muddy, the disgustingness of this sticker, came with Emotiva in nice white letters, and I liked it. Then I realized that has to come off, and that Emotiva isn't on the glass. And when I did it, it was sort of like, like, I'm all about debadging a car most of the way. My car does not have Caprice on the back of it or a Chevy logo, it's just in the grill and on the bumper, and on the um, the grill, and on the steering wheel. It's fine, people could still tell it's a Chevy. This is almost like nothingness. Don't be ashamed to be yourself, Emotiva. I mean, they're gonna know who you are regardless because of the blue light. But fill that in. I would get a, a white ink pen, and I would just rub some white ink on that and clean it off. Because, I mean, it says stealth down here and raised black lettering, and then it says PA1. I don't... How stealth we talking, Emotiva? Because I kind of want to know what it is, and you, you can't even read the font. If Emotiva is like, hey, keep these, take these to Rocky Mountain, which I would do, and I would run the uh, RB42s on them because they sounded spectacular, especially in my living room, just that little bit more to the treble was just like, <sighs> that would sell these amps, and I would add little white lab labels to that. So yeah, this is, Emotiva's first attempt, and I, oh, another thing, they say made in the USA with a bunch of reinstalled parts from other manufacturers, which means they get, uh, I love how easy this is to come out, super nice, come on, we got this, gonna need a bigger boat, boys, you're making me look bad, after all this, you're just gonna freak out, all right, they get that stuff, probably from China, and then assemble it somewhere in the United States. Now, they could I could be completely wrong. I'll wait for them to comment on that after this video gets seen by them. But a lot of those, like, assembled in USA, because, honestly, it's very hard to find places that sell capacitors. All, all the electronical... I shouldn't do this while this is plugged in. There you go. All these electronics. This is $5 in electronics here, maybe? $10, 12 it's all about the design, and they own the crossovers, and they own all this stuff. But I'm s assuming most of the... Oh, I wanted to pull that piece of glue off there. Probably not the best idea. But, um, yeah, don't touch. No touch will plug in. No touch. I want to believe these are made in USA fully, by hand, by a grandma who gets up every morning, and she, she shaves her beard, and she goes to the factory, and she hammers things until this comes out, and she's proud of it, and she goes home and bakes an apple pie. But I don't think that's the case. I think they do very little as far as U.S. assembly. I mean, look how easy it is. Even America could build this. But I don't know about all these parts. Where you made? I mean, that capacitor says Nippon. Which is actually the best thing I think you could ever say on a capacitor is Nippon. So there you go. But, uh, yeah. It's a very simple unit. It's got okay distortion numbers, just okay. It's got enough power to run most speakers to death. Keep in mind, I'm 18 dB down, and I'm ready to blow my Yamos up. It's certainly handsome, although I made this analogy when I was reviewing um, one of the other mass drop. The cases these mass drop units come in, like even the, um, put this back together again. Come on. You got this. You got it, buddy. Even this. The Aorist. This is a such a better built case. Solid aluminum all around. No flex, no screws showing. The bottom is solid. The front and rear would slide off. And then you get to the Emotiva stuff and it's like... It feels like an old VCR, which I know you don't know what an old VCR is. In fact, there's nothing that feels like an old VCR. But if you ever buy these, you'll know what it's like. It's like, I just want like the solidness of this. This would be amazing. If they spent a little bit more on these, 
boxes and they just decorated the front a little bit a little more pop and by the way i hate blue leds but i'm gonna let them slide because emotiva just lives on that if i had to call any company to say okay leave their blue leds it's emotiva because it defines them but yeah no we have got a very simple plain switcher and some amplifiers that have a couple tweet uh problems like listen it's not clicking anymore because it's not an auto standby and here's another thing, it doesn't get hot. So you could probably leave this on all the time and it would use almost no power. Actually, do I have it hooked up to uh, that? No, I don't. I don't have the kilowatt hooked up, I don't think. But I mean, you let them go to sleep, they quietly tick on the floor. If you hear ticking, that's what it is and it's not a problem. I was like emailing like, I don't know what's going on. I think there's a little terrorist inside of it. And they're like, nope. Nope, I just asked the engineers, and it's the ice power supply constantly. It could happen between every second and every 20 seconds, depending on the power source you have, if it checks for signal. Because it will go to sleep, the lights will go off, and it'll just sit there and wait. Um, I think that's enough for this event. I will link to literally everything. I'll link to these amps, to this switcher slash uh, phono pre uh, the Aris DAC, which does a bang up job. This isn't. I you can run balances. That's another thing. I could have run the Emotiva XDA2 balanced into these, but you won't gain anything on a short length. The balance connections are the connections. They don't carry more signal or less signal. They're less prone to interference, which this distance doesn't matter. But they are balanced. You can run a balanced cable to these, which when they're in my living room, that's an important thing because it's 35 feet of cable. On the desk, it's four feet of cable. And I like them enough to recommend them. They have a couple tweaks they could use. I mean, I would almost ask for a high-low gain, just one switch that puts them to half power so that you might have an easier time controlling it externally. But it's a power amp. They're not going to do that. You're supposed to get a good preamp. This is my preamp currently. You cannot buy it. Let's see, on, how long does it take to turn on? Five, six, five seconds. All right, we are done here. We're done with this review. Thank you, Motiva, for sending this out to me. I'm glad I finally got to play with these. I was gonna throw Patreon money at this. I really was. I was gonna just, just screw it, 600 bucks. And I'm glad I didn't, because I, yeah, I'd keep them, but I don't think I'd use them as much, because they have very specific wants and needs. And as cool as it is to have little tiny little preamp, little uh, monoblocks, the, the ticking and the just slight acuity it does to the audio, and throws me off. But yet, love them. Love this, love this. Just don't love them as much as I'd like to love them. I wish they were just a little bit cleaner. Even if they had to lower the power down, just to give me a little bit more cleanliness. Because they're sharp and they're detailed, but they don't sound natural. They add that, that little bit too much, and that's just throwing me off. All right, links to everything. Links to these power cords. I think you're going to enjoy them once... I think you're going to appreciate the efforts I went to once you see the price of these. If you didn't hear me whisper it earlier. Because... <laughs> GTFO old school audio files. Um, this, 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 this. Anry. Check out the Patreon. Um, if these come with me to Rocky Mountain, if they are donated for RMAF by Emotiva, they will probably end up in a yard sale afterwards. The yard sales happen to $5 patrons and higher. You're in there, you get into a document, you put a bid on all sorts of things that come up every month, and I pay for shipping to the US, the end. Uh, if you're international, I pay half shipping. So if you want these in Dubai, be prepared to pay half the shipping once it's calculated. Um, same with this. And the Aris Art Tour, I think I'm gonna keep around just because I like playing with it. Well, that's all for today. Check out the link in the comments that takes you to Hi-Fi Guides forum. And there'll be uh, probably two separate forum posts, one for this thing and one for these things. And if RMF hasn't happened yet, which I doubt I'm running blown reviews, this will definitely come out before September. Please feel free to uh, check out the GoFundMe. 
I am trying to afford to go to RMF um, because it's going to be expensive. Trying to show off cheap gear is expensive, apparently. So that's it. Enjoy the wallpaper, and I'll see you all tomorrow for another review. I'll see you all tomorrow for another review. I hate